Hello, in today's video we're going to look at microscopy, a brief history and then do a calculation using a microscope. Before the year 1200, just before we had the invention of reading stones which appeared just after glass was invented, um, but also around about that time just after the reading stones which helped for reading we had the first eyeglasses but they're not really microscopes but they did use lenses. The first microscopes appeared around 1500 and they were basically a tube and a lens in the tube that allowed a small amount of magnification. The magnification was typically around about times maybe 10 and if they were built well you might get up to times 50 and that was about the limit but about a hundred years later we had the development of what's called a compound microscope which was made of two lenses and that increased the magnification further. That allowed us in the mid 1600s to see cells for the first time and the first person recorded as seeing cells was a scientist called Robert Hooke. He was the actual person that uh, used the word cell to describe what he saw. Uh, it was actually in cork. Um, but then go forward another couple of hundred years or few hundred years and we have the development of something called the electron microscope and that was a big breakthrough because it changed how we saw uh, tiny things totally. The light microscope that you have in your classroom now is a type of compound microscope and that can magnify things up to about 1500 times. So in other words things look about 1500 times bigger through the microscope compared to real life. So electron microscopes they actually work a lot better and they can magnify up to half a million times, 500 times, 500,000 times. So they make objects look 500,000 times bigger than they actually are. The other great thing about electron microscopes though is that they have what's called a high resolution. They have a much higher resolution than light microscopes and that allows for things to be seen much more clearly. Just to give an example of how that works, I've got the same object magnified by the same amount of times. So here it is magnified the first time and you can see the outline there but here in the second example we've got the same magnification but in the second example we've got a much higher resolution. The image has a higher resolution and you can see it's much more clear to see and you can actually spot that there are two separate objects there whereas in the first image it's harder to see or confirm whether there are two separate objects. So the electron microscope works in two ways. It has a higher resolution and a higher magnification than our light microscope which is very useful. It might be worth pausing and just having a look over that. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to estimate the size of objects that we would see under a microscope and this hopefully you've done as a class practical. But what we have is a light microscope and we can use that to estimate the size of an object that you might see under there. What we do is we start off with a millimeter scale that's mounted or drawn onto a slide. So there the units are millimeters. It could be others, it could be half millimeters or quarter millimeters. But in this case I'm going to use the example of millimeters and we're going to put that under the microscope and see how it looks. So you'll notice I've got two scales here. The one at the bottom, that's the scale we've put under the microscope and that unit there is one millimeter. But in the eyepiece, in the eyepiece we have another scale and that actually is not in any particular units, it's called arbitrary units. Arbitrary units, not any particular scale like centimeters or millimeters or uh, micrometers. And that's found or you would put that into the eyepiece and sometimes it's known as eyepiece graticule. And we can use these two together to work out the size of objects. So there's one, one millimeter and we can work out how many of our arbitrary units are in that one millimeter. So in this case I've got 20. 20 arbitrary units in one millimeter. So if I know that there are 20 units in one millimeter I can work out how much each of those arbitrary units is in millimeters. So that would be a case of doing 1 divided by 20 and that gives us an answer of 0.05 millimeters. Each unit is 0.05 millimeters. We can now then find a slide of cells that we want to look at. So these are onion cells. Again, this is hopefully something you've done in class. And it's always good practice to 
show what magnification the image is. So we've got times 400. And there is our eyepiece graticule scale. And we're going to measure the length of that cell there. You might not be able to see that too clearly, but it's from there to there. And we can count that we have 5, 10, 12 of our graticule units or 12 of our arbitrary units. And we know that one unit is 0 0.05. Move that over a bit. One unit is 0 0.05 millimeters. We worked that out on our last slide. So then it's quite straightforward. There we go, worked it out over here. Then it's quite straightforward to work out the size of the cell. We just do the 12 units that we measured multiplied by 0 0.05 millimeters. Try and keep the equal signs neat and underneath each other. So 12 times 0 0.05 gives us a size of 0 0.6 millimeters. Okay, so that's one way we can estimate the size of cells using an eyepiece graticule and a millimeter scale. Let's have a go at doing one more. So we can measure that cell there. It's from that distance to there, the length of that cell. If you can uh, see that, you can have a go yourself by pausing now. I've got the cell size in units as 26. So our arbitrary units is 26. We know that again, one unit is worth 0 0.05. So we have a total length of 1.3 millimeters. That's quite long for a cell, but that's what we've got based on our calculations. Okay, so that's how we can est one way we can estimate the size of cells using our microscope. And in our next video, we're going to look at how we can do magnification calculations. So here's a sneak peek of that. I'll do that in a separate video, but for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.